Okay. Uh, my name is Brad Nelson. I'm a professor here at the uh, ETH Zurich, uh, professor of robotics and intelligent systems, and my, my specialty is, is combining robotics with micro and nanotechnologies. In the Institute of Robotics and Intelligent Systems, I run the Multiscale Robotics Lab, and so our, our goal is to understand how we can build intelligent machines that operate from micro to nanoscales. So we do a lot of uh, design of these machines, uh, fabrication of these machines, testing of the mach these kinds of machines, these nano machines and micro machines, and then we try to find applications for them in the real world. So. A lot of the applications we find are in biology and medicine, so uh, if we can make tiny little things that can move in intelligent ways, one of the, uh, the obvious uh, applications would be in, for instance, uh, small devices that carry drugs that could target a particular location in the body to deliver drugs. We do uh, a lot of work in the eye and work on how we can deliver drugs to the retina at very specific locations, uh, but we're also interested in fundamentally how do we make small things and, and things smaller than a millimeter all the way down to a nanometer in scale, how can we make those small things and make them move and move in controlled and intelligent ways? A lot of the processes are, uh, we, we are derived from the, the semiconductor uh, industry, the, the, the same industry that makes computer chips for your, uh, your uh, smartphones and your, your laptops and your computers. We use those same kind of manufacturing processes to make uh, mechanical devices uh, of a similar scale. A lot of our inspirations come from uh, bacteria that have these small rotary motors. So, so, so some bacteria like E. coli and Salmonella have evolved uh, rotary motors that are around 45 or 50 nanometers in diameter. Uh, while we're not at the point where we can make motors that small. What we can do, though, is look at the physics of why do they have rotary motors. They have these little flagella that, that turn like little propellers and propel itself uh, in, their, in their environments. And so we, we, we look at that. We're inspired by, by those kinds of uh, organisms we see. And then uh, we try to understand how can we use some of these fabrication processes that we borrowed from the semiconductor industry to make devices that, uh, that move like, like an E. coli or a, a salmonella bacteria. One of the uh, things we started to look at recently, for instance, have been in environmental cleanup where these devices may be able to go and help catalyze uh, certain pollutants and, and uh, uh, help clean up the environment. So we're looking at different kinds of applications where we can send out swarms of these, you know, hundreds, thousands, millions of these devices to try to clean up uh, polluted uh, streams and things like that. But a lot of the work is very fundamental, just how do we control these small things? Uh, uh, and, and then as we do that, we start learning things and find applications. And so uh, even along the way, applications come up that we didn't envision. For instance, one of the, one of the techniques that we've patented has been a, a particular way we can generate magnetic fields to control small things. Now, that patent that, uh, that ETH owns now has been licensed by a company. They're not interested in controlling micro robots with it, but they're using it to guide catheters uh, that are going into your body, for instance, in, into the heart. And so a lot of these technologies, uh, as you're going down this path, they, they spin off into, into areas that we really didn't originally consider. I've been, I've been at ETH 12 years now, and, and it's, it, I've seen this field uh, change in, in just the past decade. So the next decade, I'm uh, excited to see what's gonna happen. I, I think that we will see uh, devices that are able to uh, be controlled and that will be able to, to do targeted therapies, for instance, delivering uh, drugs to very specific locations in the body, perhaps delivering stem cells to, to locations uh, so to, to help treat things. Um, <clears throat> so I see, I see some of those applications uh, uh, on the, certainly in a 10-year time frame, uh, but it's, it's a, um, uh, it's more than just solving technological hurdles and solving the engineering and science. We also have to work closely with medical doctors uh, to understand uh, what the needs are there. And we also, uh, to, to get these uh, into the clinic to really help people requires a tremendous investment. And so then we also have to have business people. We have to have business models that make sense uh, for this to go that far. So it, it really brings together not just the engineering and science, it also brings together medicine and even, even you've got to consider the business side of things and, and does this make sense uh, from an economic viewpoint to, to push the, the technology in these directions. So.